I was having a conversation the other day about how World Tour cyclists are going faster than ever, as you do, and the World Tour coach that I was chatting to, humble brag at that, said most of it is down to the bikes. What? All this talk about Pogaccia and Van Vluten and Van Aert and Van Der Poel being the best ever, but actually maybe it's all about the bike? Well, yeah, maybe. A lot has happened in the last 10 years, and a teeny tiny bit of that was GCN starting. Subscribe now and your life will become complete. An anniversary that got me feeling all nostalgic. And it just so happens that tucked away in a corner of my loft, I have the bike that I rode when GCN first started. A red specialized S-Works Tarmac SL3 with 11-speed Campagnolo Chorus. So let's rewind 10 years and see just what the difference is. Have bikes really moved on that much? How much faster are they? 13 speed cassette on there. The cassette is bigger. You still have a higher top gear than you would have on a traditional cassette. Particularly terrible roads and off-road, the bigger the potential savings you can make. And just take a look at this. No inner tube, no tire levers. That's like the third time I've done it, and I'm still utterly flabbergasted. And today is very exciting because for the very first time, SRAM's new red ETAP wireless shifter. The new SRAM Red ETAP HRD, which combines wireless electronic shifting with hydraulic disc brakes. Oh, this is SRAM's new one by Force One. Looks all right. This is a bike where you can genuinely feel the difference to your speed. The only issue is that I've got to get it out of my loft. One of my least favorite places on the planet. The mere thought of getting my Christmas decorations out is enough to put me in a bad mood for most of December. I don't even know what all this stuff is. It's just up here. But, ha, ha, ha. There you go, you see it? Just underneath the radiator, behind the camping mat. There it is. No longer red, which would be a striking difference in the last 10 years. That's actually because the red one developed a crack around the bottom bracket. Threaded, not press fit. So pipe down, you in the comments. Um, but anyway, I got a warranty version and um, I didn't like the colour. I didn't fancy having rainbow stripes on my bike. So I got it resprayed and there it is. Uh, cool. Right then, just give me, I don't know, six and a half hours and I reckon I'll have it out. It's like being at the bottom of the sea in a submarine. Oh my goodness, we've just discovered. Campagnolo Chorus from 2012 underneath a radiator. Ta-da! One quick tire change later and having dusted off most of the cobwebs, here it is, the bike that I used to ride when GCN first started. Now, I should say, I never actually bought this bike. This was given to me by the last team that I raced for before I retired. Now, no giving me grief about racing on Chorus like you used to in the comments section, all right? is my spare bike. And actually, I've got to say, this is one of the most beautiful group sets of all time, in my opinion. Now, clearly, the bike is not quite top of the range, or it wasn't back then, so perhaps it's not entirely fair to directly compare it to my new Canyon Air Road CFR, but we will do, and actually what this absolutely will do as well is provide a fantastic illustration of the major changes over the last decade, because my word, there have been a lot. Super aero frame, just 915 grams. Not a hint of aero anywhere, but only 875 grams for the frame. Completely internal routing, external cables, hydraulic disc brakes, rim brakes. Yes, I can already hear a few of you diehards lusting after this bike in the comment section. You are, aren't you? Admit it. 12 speed wireless electronic, 11 speed mechanical. Press fit bottom bracket, threaded bottom bracket. Room for 32 mil tires, clearance for 25 mil tires. 11 to 30 cassette, 1125. Then yes, that is a SRAM cassette, because uh, I couldn't be bothered to change the free hub over. 
But what does that stuff actually mean? I mean, does this feel any different to ride? Will it go any slower? And does that actually matter? Well, before we find out, I need to go get this ready. Well, that's it, isn't it? Nothing to charge, nothing to bleed, no sealant to top up. It's ready to roll after 10 years. I mean, to be fair, it was immaculately looked after, as you well know. And then spray WD-40 on your chain and cassette and give them a bit of a spin. So how does it feel? Blooming great, honestly. I'll tell you what I really like, just on a personal note, is the fact that my position on this bike is unchanged, basically, since my last day when I was racing as a pro. So it's like my own personal museum piece. Of course, I have been fighting off lucrative offers from actual museums wanting to secure this piece of history, but I'm turning them down. Anyway, it still fits like a glove. The saddle position is a bit further back. I've definitely moved further forward and lower on my new bikes and also the crank length. So everyone of my height was riding 175 mil cranks and I've now gone to 172.5. And as you well know, if you've been paying attention, I've been recommending to go even shorter still. The other thing that's cool is just how similarly the bike handles, how nimble and how responsive it is. And I did check actually on geometrygeeks.bike, my joint favorite website, along with bicyclerollingresistance.com for ultimate nerdery. Anyway, someone has amazingly uploaded the geometry of this very model and year of bike. So I was able to compare it directly to my new ones. And it's basically the same, like it's hardly changed at all. Apart from my Canyon and my Orbea are both lower at the front for that new, more aggressive position. But it's cool, it means that race bikes still feel like race bikes. Like, we obviously nailed that years ago. Does it feel as stiff as my modern bikes? No, no it does not. Like, really good still but just not quite as pin sharp. Maybe that's what 10 years in a loft does for you, I don't know. Anyway, two other things. On these aluminium wheels, in these dry conditions, the rim brakes, of course, feel absolutely great. And then the other thing is this mechanical shifting. This era of Campagnolo was the loudest clicker ever. Amazing, no stealth attacks. Everyone knew what you're about to do, but it's really cool. It could do with a bit of a, a tune up, I'm not gonna lie, but ah, it's great. Wow, so far, so good. And it's no big surprise, is it? A 10 year old bike, that was super expensive is of course still gonna be amazing. And for many of you, it's about to get even better. Everything on my canyon is concealed or integrated. I mean, it looks like a work of art sat there or a stealth fighter, I absolutely love it. On my older bike though, Aesthetically, it's much more functional. Everything is exposed. The cables, I've got a two-piece bar and stem with all the bolts. I've got my brake cables and my gear cables exposed on the frame there. And as I mentioned earlier, I've got a threaded bottom bracket as well. So aesthetically, it's nowhere near as clean. However, there is no part of this bike that I can't service. Technically, the same is true on my Canyon, but the reality is that I still have to watch YouTube videos when I want to bleed my disc brakes. They don't go wrong, so it's a job I do very rarely. And the internal cable routing on this bike does not require a degree in engineering, but not all modern bikes have been created equally. 
So we have definitely sacrificed a degree of ease and serviceability on the altar of performance and aesthetics. Now I'm back on my canyon. Can I tell the difference? Oh my God, yes. The difference is like night and day. This one feels like it's got an engine. And you might not believe me that I can feel the difference, but when you add up the differences, aero frame, aero wheels, aero handlebars, integrated cables, reducing turbulence, modern tires, modern electronic gears, it all adds up. Now how much it adds up to, well that is the million dollar question. And to answer it, I need to put a bit of effort in. Climb next, my Wahoo has just informed me that it's actually called the Hlandogo Leg Shredder. So uh, that sounds nice. Right. Such a good climb. Definitely a lung shredder, not a leg shredder. Lung blaster, lung, the lung obliterator. No, I can't need to think about that. Run number two. Different ball game, that. I think that's why I might be feeling faster as I'm hitting 40, as I was when I was just 10 30. So, what can I tell you then from 25 minutes of hard intervals? Well, on the climb, my Canyon Air Roads did a time of 5 minutes and 41 seconds. And my older bike posted a time of six minutes and one second, so 20 seconds slower. And on the flat, it was a similar picture. Canyon Air Road, six minutes and 17 seconds. This bike did it in six minutes and 41 seconds. Now, 23 seconds difference might not sound like a huge amount, but that's three kilometers per hour for the same level of effort, which to my mind, is a significant amount. Does that mean then that my older bike is total crap? No, absolutely not does it mean that in any way. I mean, a lot of us are riding bikes exactly like this right now, and we will know full well that they are great. And of those of us that are fortunate enough to be riding newer bikes like this one, a lot of us were riding bikes exactly like this two, three, four years ago, and I don't think we love the sport any more now because of our disc brakes or our electronic gears or our aero frames that look like something out of Batman's garage, quite frankly. So does it mean then that the last decade of innovation is meaningless? Nope, I don't think it means that either. I mean, we started with uh, talking about pro racing. Anyone who's watched pro racing on GCN Plus in the last couple of years will know that we are in a truly blessed era of spectacular races, some of which I'm sure is down to technology. And what about general riding then? Well, again, no, I don't think it's pointless. You could argue that some of it is unnecessary in the sense that we don't actually need it, but then you could argue about that with a lot of modern technology that promises to make our lives easier or more fulfilled. You can certainly do without a lot of it. And 
It's a little bit like that with bikes, isn't it? Modern technology has not changed the fundamentals of the sport. And that's a really good thing because the sport has always been fantastic. To my mind, the easiest analogy to draw is perhaps to cars. An older car still gets you to your destination and probably at exactly the same time. But a modern car, the journey there is perhaps just slightly more enjoyable. But I think the analogy that I like best is to a kitchen knife. Bear with me, okay? You can make an amazing tasting meal with any old knife, but if you are cooking with a razor sharp, incredible kitchen knife, then every slice, every cut, every chop just feels that little bit more pleasurable. And to a certain extent, that's what it's like with a modern bike. Every shift, every break, every sprint, every climb just feels fractionally even better than it did on the older bike. So, modern bikes are like kitchen knives. You heard it here first. Let us know in the comment section down below what you think about this. Were you here in the early days of GCN? Do you remember the old classic? And what do you think about the progression of cycling technology? I'm gonna be interested to read your comments. Give it a big thumbs up if you've enjoyed it. I'll see you next time.